Time for our Facts or Facts. And the National Park Service turns 106 years old this summer. That's more than a century of educating the public on nature and conservation. Such an awesome cause. Now, in that time, they've grown to encompass 423 parks, protecting plants and wildlife living in each one. The newest park added to the list is West Virginia's New River Gorge, which became a national park in 2020. I've actually been there. It's, oh, you have? It's pretty impressive. They're yeah. all impressive. I don't mm -hmm. think I've been to one that isn't pretty. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Yes. just part of the uh, deal there. And the oldest national park, of course, is Yellowstone. It actually predates the National Park Service. It was established 1872. It's 150 years of tourists exploring canyons, geysers, and the habitats. It's one of my favorite national parks in the world. It's breathtaking. I've only actually seen pictures, but it's on you my list. Yeah, I it's will go. It's also a century and a half of research by scientists and rangers. As you can imagine, they've seen a lot of changes in that time. Park ranger Rich Yaley joins us now. And, you know, uh, Yellowstone has been in the news quite a bit recently with extreme weather, and it has had its share of extreme weather over the years, including the flooding that we've just seen. So can you share some of the, the data about the park that you've collected over the years with the the changing climate and the extreme weather events? Yeah, you know, Yellowstone is, is sits on a high plateau. We're sort of up at the headwaters of a lot of river systems. So we have extreme weather here. Um, and, you know, for a long time, one of the record low temperatures in the continental United States, for instance, was uh, just west of where I'm at in West Yellowstone, Montana, at 66 below. Um, there's been all sorts of uh, research going on. You know, one of the things that powers the Yellowstone area is the volcanic system that we're sitting on. Um, one of the largest volcanic systems in the world. And that's what's providing the heat for the features that make the park famous, the geysers, the hot springs, the mud pots, steam vents. Uh, and, uh, you know, in the past two million years, we've had, three very large volcanic eruptions here, larger than anything that's ever happened in recorded human history. And there's lots of research that's associated with that through different universities, University of Utah. There's also a, what's called the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, which closely monitors the uh, volcanic activity in the park. Um, and that gives us a, a lot of insight into how this system functions and how that uh, affects the features in the park. Yeah, as well. Ranger Rich, do, does climate affect the geysers and all the hot springs and everything? Is that affected and impacted by the climate? You know, I think Old Faithful. Oh no, is that going to be changing over time with climate change? You know, there's there's been ongoing research on that for a long time. The the traditional interpretation of Old Faithful, for instance, is that the water that you see in an eruption of Old Faithful is has been underground for many many hundreds of years. And that's certainly the case for a lot of the water that's, that we're seeing in that specific feature, for instance. But more recent research is showing that there's probably some mixing of, of closer uh, to the surface water. Um, but it's, we're always learning new things. As far as we can tell from uh, just observing the features and old, using Old Faithful as an example, the eruptive activity of Old Faithful, as far as the water, the volume, the average height, has not really changed in, since the park was founded. In the last 150 years, what has changed over the last 150 years is the average interval between eruptions has lengthened, and we think that can be tied directly to earthquakes, particularly a large earthquake in 1959 just west of the park at the Hepkin Lake earthquake, a uh, more recent one in the mid-80s in Idaho at the Bora Peak earthquake. So back in, say, 1960, the average interval between eruptions of Old Faithful was probably about an hour. Now it's over an hour and a half. Mm. Um, so things change. These features are not static. They are they are fragile. They are affected by earthquakes and changes in their underground plumbing systems. Um, so you know, Old Faithful is is unique in that it has a lot of eruptions, and there we are able to predict those eruptions within a relatively narrow window of about ten minutes either way. But that doesn't mean it's always going to be that way. Old Faithful could. Uh, continue to change and will undoubtedly continue to change over time as will most of the other thermal features. Yeah, I never yeah. thought about earthquakes and climate and if things right. are different underground, how that can affect everything as well. Yeah, and we know that that is one of the, the biggest draws of Yellowstone National Park. So can you explain that to us a, a little bit more? How do the earthquakes and things like that nature affect kind of the timing and just affect these geothermal sure. features? Yeah, no, so again, I'll use Old Faithful as an example, but any geyser, and there's about 
three or 400 geysers in the park, which is the biggest concentration of anywhere in the world. Probably half the known geysers, at least in the park or in Yellowstone, or in the world or in Yellowstone. Every one of those has its origins in an earthquake, probably, because that's what's causing fractures underground that is allowing water falling from rain and snow that's seeping down in through these cracks that subsequently gets heated by that volcanic system, the caldera, the magma underneath us, and then rising back up, um, you know, that's all, all those ingredients are required to have a geyser. And so if you change any one thing, for instance, an earthquake in the case of Old Faithful changes that plumbing system in the slightest way, it can affect what we see at the surface. Now, Old Faithful is unique in that, as far as we can tell, it's probably not connected to a lot of other features underground. Mm. That's not the case with most of these features. So most of the guys that's in Yellowstone, we can't predict. Yeah. There's only maybe five or six out of three or 400 that we can predict. And that's because most of the other ones we think probably have an underground connection to other features that either rob their heat or rob their water. Um, and it's not a closed system like we think old Interesting. Is. I never thought about it. It makes sense, right? If yeah. you have less rain, then you don't have the moisture there. Uh, Ranger Rich, I want to talk about the animals, though. Have you seen changes over the last 150 years uh, that have affected climate changes that have affected the animals in the park? Um, you know, what we, we are starting to see some effects of climate change, um, particularly perhaps on some of the, the animals you might not think of immediately when you think of Yellowstone. Usually you think of the big, the big charismatic megafauna like bears or bison uh, when you think of Yellowstone, but some of the smaller ones, things like a pika, which is in the, in the Lagomorph family related to rabbits, actually, they are ones that utilize high elevation habitats, which as climate change progresses, those high elevation habitats are becoming warmer and warmer and warmer. And so their habitat is shrinking. Um, yeah. You know, recently we had, um, in the Yellowstone River, right down near Gardner, uh, or just inside the park boundary, a smallmouth bass was caught in an area that we had never seen those before, which is a warm water species um, in a stream, the Gardner River, which is normally a, a high mountain trout stream, relies on colder temperatures. And we think, we don't know for sure, but there's a good indication that that's maybe related to climate change. Mm, yeah. um, All right. Those, All those, those little clues really yeah. coming together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Ranger yeah. Rich Yaley, thanks so much for taking some time out of your day and talking to us about this fascinating stuff going on there. And now we know why it's called Old Faithful.